But we are now ready for our four, for our, our end of the day session. I told you we were going to have some fun. I told you to hold on to your seats. And now I'm so excited uh, to introduce you to the one incredible lady. And uh, I had the pleasure of meeting um, Victory Boyd uh, at the Nelson Mandela 100 celebration. And I remember the moment that I heard this young woman sing, I was in absolute tears. Her voice was so amazing, and I think every woman at that table was crying. And when she came off the uh, stage, she walked over to me, and, uh, and she sat at the table with me. And I just remember just her presence and just how blessed I, I think everybody felt that night that uh, she actually uh, sang. And so, so I want to tell you a little bit about you know, the first time you hear from her, you think, wow, she's got this kind of amazing kind of voice. What is it? What's what? I mean, what, she's and people say it's uh, music kind of fusion between soul music and folk music. And and whether you hear Victory uh, singing with her brothers and sisters, which they, which they have a group infinity song or whether she's singing solo. I, I remember the first time I heard, I was like, wow, is it Tracy Chapman, Roberta Flack, or Nina Simone? I mean, she brings it all. And so it is so my pleasure to be able to introduce you to, to my friend, my sister, my mentee, Miss Victory Boyd. Welcome, Victory. Thank you for having me, Miss Phyllis. What an incredible opportunity it is to be able to, to share you with the rest of the world. I, I always say that it's like you, you want to gobble Victory up and not share with anybody. <laughs> So, so here's what I'd like to do. I, I'm so, I'd like to take people down a little bit of your journey. I know a lot about your story, and I, I know that your story is so inspiring. And I, I want to first start with a snapshot of your journey. So can, give us a little snapshot of your journey. What has it been like as an artist? Well, I think like any artist, uh, my journey is full of highs and lows. Anyone that you see in the spotlight experiencing glory, oftentimes that is a counterpoint to a challenge that they had to overcome in order to walk in such glory and, and fortune. Most people don't just wake up and they're living a glorious life. Most people, they have to go through like a caterpillar season before they become a butterfly. And so my journey has very much been exactly that. And, um, you know, me and my family, I come from a large musical family. I have eight siblings and um, two amazing parents. And we all grew up singing together, uh, grew up on the west side of Detroit. We didn't have uh, very much, but we had each other and we had God. And um, we had the gifts that God gave us and we utilized everything we had in our possessions um, to, to make the best of it. And, and that's how, uh, you know, that's how we became who we are today. Now, uh, you know, a good 20 years later, <laughs> you know, cause I started singing when I was four years old, I'm 26 now. So uh, give or take 20 years or so, um, you know, I'm signed, I was signed by Jay-Z to Rock Nation, wrote some hit songs for Kanye West, um, uh, I am currently sitting in a studio that I own and built and, um, you know, you, like the dream keeps unfolding, you know, the, the goodness of God really, and, and combined with, uh, faith and persistence has really, um, turned into quite an incredible life. And that's not to say that there hasn't been the many, many trials and tribulations, but the goodness of God has always been there to see me through them. And so that's, and so my name victory is, is not just, you know, a name or something, but it's, it's also a state of mind and a way of life. And, and so to sum up my, my, my journey. I know how you were discovered. What, what I, I would love for them to hear that. I, I know the first time I heard it, the story on how you all were discovered. Talk about that moment and, and what happened directly after that. Yeah, so there is a gentleman by the name of James Samuel. He is uh, the, the, the world-renowned recording artist Seal, uh, Seal's younger brother, pretty much discovered me 
Um, I was singing in Central Park with my family for about 10 years. And I would also do some singing by myself in the park. And someone, James sent a video of me singing in Central Park to Jay-Z. And, and Jay saw the video and, and James was just, was hyping me up. He's like, this girl, he's British. He's like, this girl is the next Tracy Chapman. She's like the next Amy Winehouse. Like you have to sign, sign her. And, and Jay was like, oh, work. And I want to meet her. And so it was uh, within that same week, within a few days, like Jay saw the video he sent an email wanting to meet me and like the next day my dad and I were in the office with Jay at the, at the top of the skyscraper in Times Square and and my dad being forward thinking told my brothers and sisters he said now I know Jay wants to see victory but I want y'all to come along and wait in the lobby and if there's an opportunity for you to come up Trust me, you, you will be you will be coming up right behind her, and so that's exactly what happened. Because when we sat down with Jay, he wanted to hear our story, and you can't I can't tell my story without acknowledging my brothers and sisters and the pivotal role they played in in my development and we played in each other's development. And so he, Jay's like, man, I I would love to meet your the whole family, and my dad is like, well, they're right downstairs. I can I'll I'll call them right up. And so my brothers and sisters came up no, no more than 30 minutes after I was up there. And here we are, the whole family at, at the top of the skyscraper in Times Square, where for when for many years we had been, uh, you know, on ground level. And, and even for many years, we sang underground, like the train stations, and the parks. And then all of a sudden... And, after 10 years, you, you know how people talk about bamboo trees, how they spend many, many years growing underground. And then all of a sudden, when it's time, they just grow really, really fast above ground. And it, that was kind of like our experience because we just were in New York for 10 years um, performing in unconventional settings. And then in a moment's time, um, our trajectory, like we were all of a sudden above ground and we were growing really, really fast. And it's been four years since that moment and, and a lot of incredible things have happened since. Yeah, I, I remember um, you performed here in Atlanta right after, shortly after you and I met and you came <laughs> to my home and, uh, and stayed with me. And then you also, then your brothers and sisters also came to the home that night and stayed with me. I, yeah. had, a I had a home full of the boys at my home. And I have to <laughs> yeah. tell you, was just on an incredible journey. You know, giving back and, and I've been. And so let's talk about you know, victory. As I talk about um, producer, uh, you're also. Uh, I'm watching a video of you singing one of Adele's songs. You told me this, that you only learned one of Adele's songs in that within a short amount of time. And then there you were singing it right in front of her, and she just was blown away. And I remember watching that on, on uh, I remember watching that on the video and uh, on Instagram, and I thought, wow. So, Victory, let's talk about you as the entrepreneur. And I know, you know, we talked a while back and you talked about pivoting and, and how the music industry was changing. Let's t share that with us for a moment. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of pivoting that is necessary in the music industry right now. And pivoting for me is, is I'd like to say natural because of the family that I grew up in. We didn't really do anything conventionally with 11 people in our family. Uh, you know, it was very much a lifestyle of pivoting, doing whatever we need to do to ensure that everyone is taken care of. And so with that mindset and then seeing pretty much the whole music industry crash, um, uh, there was a natural sense of leadership and responsibility that I, I s assumed. And, you know, because I started to um, 
me as having a brand, I started to have more opportunities just just for myself. People would call and hire me just to come on and do virtual events, but to expand it so that it's not just myself that is included in these conversations, like to also include musicians, also include a film crew, also, um, uh, also just include other people that perhaps don't have brands, but very much are excellent in their craft and, and are suffering because of the pandemic. So that is just naturally an instinct of mine that I've, um, that I've grown up with as, as a big sister in a really big family. And then aside from that, um, I always had like a mindset to, to sell and uh, cause grew up selling CDs uh, as, as a child. Um, and some, some girls grew up as Girl Scouts selling cookies. I grew up selling, selling albums, you know, door to door and stuff like that. Um, and, and also sometimes I would sell things directly to my brothers and sisters, just like, you know, snacks and up, up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, it, it's kind of natural to me. And some people are like, well, you can't be on stage and, you know, in the boardroom or you can't, you know, like pick one. And it's like, I mean, I've been doing it my whole life. So it's just it's just natural. Now it's just more formal, but it's, you know, it's just who I am. As an entrepreneur, especially, uh, uh, you know, I'd say women entrepreneurs today, you know, they um, we look at companies that are trying to go public or get funding to expand their their growth. And I know that, you know, you, when you decided to go into the tech and, and create um, this, uh, this uh, new technology that you're working on, what yeah. have you found as a young entrepreneur are some of the challenges and, and what are you doing to overcome those challenges? Well, concerning our piece of technology that we're working on, our challenges happen to be just in, in the process of, of making a unique product because our, our product, which is um, a platform that brings musicians together in a place to teach people that aspire to be musicians or artists. So making that platform and process that is seamless, that is user-friendly, that's easy, and that is very effective in growth for, for the consumers. Um, you know, that has been our challenge to make a model because it's never been done before that I know of. And um, so what we're trying to do is, is make it so that our technology is highly effective and uh, because it's very original. And um, we've seen tremendous results from our, from our um, courses and from our uh, community that we've brought together. But then the actual technology part is, is the part that we're still undergoing a lot of research and development. So that's on the development side, but then there's the business side that has to do with raising money and getting into rooms and having conversations with people that perhaps are much more experienced than I am in, in like the venture capital world, you know, and in that area, I'm very much still growing and very much uh, getting my feet wet, but 90% of it has to do with confidence. And if there's anything that um, someone that an artist, that's an artist has to learn is how to stand up in front of tens of thousands of people, sometimes millions of people and have the nerve to open up your mouth and express yourself. And I have that. So I very much uh, believe that it's only a matter of time before everything clicks across the board. And, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm very much secure in in the process of growing and as well as just in in the idea of believing that you know i'm i'm worth i'm worth it to have these high level conversations and, and make these high level pitches and like, absolutely I, I tell you what every every time that i get this opportunity to talk to you you know you're you're, you're as a young woman especially african-american woman and today you're, you're so inspiring. I know there's so many young girls that are looking at you and they're 
like, okay, I want to, you know, the, knowing your journey, knowing your story, where you've come from, and how you've been able to overcome, and then it's not, I don't call, consider where you are in your leg of the journey as luck. I just, I just think that you have an opportunity to bless the world with your voice. So on that note, I'm going to ask, would you mind playing a little bit for us? I wouldn't mind at all. Let's do it. We'd love to hear some of your music. And, and uh, so we'd ask if you would do that for us. Let's go. I got the music right over here, the band and everything. And this is Stevie Wonder's Love's in Need of Love today.
so blessed to have it But love's in need of love today Send yours in right away And heads over here going around Breaking many hearts Stop it please Before it's gone too far Wow, you know what? I just want to, uh, victory, victory, victory. How awesome was that? Uh, first of all, on behalf of all of the members and everybody here at Converge and TAG, we, we just love that. And we just thank you for blessing us this, this uh, last segment with that, some fun. And, and I told you I don't know how to sing, but I know I got my groove and I can. And so you got me in my groove. There we go. You got me no, in my I groove. So listen. We thank you, and we hope that this is, just, is not the last time you'll, we'll, you'll be with us at TAG, and we so appreciate you, you sharing your music with us. And so, guys, go out there, look her up, Victory Boyd, and you know her music, and she's got a holiday special coming out, so let's go out and support her as well. So thank you so much, Victory. You're very welcome. Glad to be here. <laughs>